Hi and welcome to Homeschoolology. My name is Nikki and I am a homeschooling mom of four and on this channel I like to talk to you guys about all things secular homeschooling and maybe a little bit about motherhood. So today's video I'm going to be talking to you about what we do for fairy tales. So we are kind of combining this with our geography lessons that we're doing right now which I kind of touched on in my last video which I'll link up here. So basically what we're doing is we are picking a fairy tale that is either takes place in the country or is a tale that was written by somebody from that country or has to do with that country, the, of the country that we're studying for that week. And so we find a fairy tale from that country or that is significant in that country and we read it a couple different versions of it. So I've been using this Random House, um, the Random House Book of Fairy Tales. And um, the other resources have been like, we'll compare it to a Disney version, or I have some other books, um, other fairy tale books, and then, or maybe one that we find on YouTube or one that I find online. So we've been reading a couple of those, and then we will read, um, we will use this fairy tale science book, um, and it has kind of like an overview or just the general gist of the story overall, you know, kind of looking at all the different versions of it and kind of a general gist of what happens. And then it gives you either two or three experiments per story that focuses on a topic that ties into that fairy tale. This book, I am in love with. It is probably one of my most favorite resources that I've used so far in homeschool. It has been so fun. So we are covering science with that. And then because we're reading several different versions of um, the fairy tale, we'll be able to, we're able to do a compare and contrast. And um, I actually kind of got this idea from the Jot It Down from Brave Writer. So the way this is, is you have like one project that you work on each month. And so this was just one of the month's projects was doing fairy tales, reading a different versions of it and comparing and contrasting. And I kind of took that and just expanded it. And we've been doing, instead of doing it for a month, we've been doing it for the whole year. And my kids are eating this up. They absolutely love doing fairy tales. Um, and we are hitting language arts, we are hitting science, we are hitting geography, we are hitting a whole bunch of history even on some of them. So this is like really a true unit study format that we're using here. And I really enjoy it a lot. And my students are really enjoying it a lot. So I'm gonna switch to a down view of each of these books to kind of show you what they are especially this fairy tale science one. So I highly recommend it. I'm going to link it down below in the comments for you guys. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask away down in the comments or on Instagram over at homeschoolology. And I'd be happy to answer them or show you guys some more. Um, I even, even was able to record a little bit of us doing one of these lessons. So I'm going to include that for you guys here as well. So I'm going to jump to the down view and I'll see you back here soon. Okay, so here is the Random House Book of Fairy Tales. I found this book, um, once upon a time, we used to use Build Your Library, and this is one of the um, spine books from that. And even though Build Your Library didn't work for us, I really do love the books that they've included in their curricula. Um, they have some really great books that we've found and still use and love today. But this is the inside of this book. It has all the different fairy tales. Um, lots of the common ones that you're used to. It does give you a little bit of an introduction. Um, and then it has some really beautiful illustrations. But it includes them like most popular like Hans Christian Andersen and Brothers Grimm's versions of the fairy tales. Um, so we have been using this as like our main fairy tale book. So once we've read the version of the fairy tale in this book, we will find another version of the fairy tale, whether it be a Disney movie or um, a version from a different country or a different region, or I found them, I have some other books that have fairy tales in them, or I found some online or even some read-throughs on YouTube. So basically I wanna make sure I cover two different versions of each fairy tale. Then we will use this book here. And this book has several different fairy tales in it, and it's actually got quite a few. There's these. 
and then all of these. And so I will find the story in here. So for instance, um, the one that we did today that I was able to include a little bit of a screen or a little bit of a demonstration of us doing the lesson was the frog prints. And so here it will give you kind of like an overview of the most general or most popular versions of the story. And it will give you a little bit about the origin of the story, which I really like. And then it gives you some science experiments to do. So it stop, starts with like an explanation of the concept and then it gives you one, two to three experiments to do based on that topic. So this one happened to have three. So we did the sinking keel, the foil boats with pennies, and the egg in regular water versus salt water. And each experiment gives you a little explanation of what happened in the experiment. And then it goes on to the next story. I highly recommend this book. We have been enjoying it so much. It's so wonderful. It's beautifully illustrated. It has some really great um, information, both uh, literature-wise and science-wise. Um, and it has been such a great fit for our homeschool. So I highly, highly, highly recommend Fairy Tale Science. I will try to link it down below um, if I can find it on Amazon, but I picked this up at a local bookstore. or sink. Whether or not an object floats or sinks has to do with two things, its buoyancy and its weight. An object is in water is pushed upwards by the buoyancy force of the water and pulled downward by its weight. If the upward force of the water is greater than the weight of the water, the object has pushed out of the way the object floats. A beach ball floats because it weighs very little relative to its size. A solid gold, gold ball sinks because it weighs its weight is greater than the buoyancy force pushing up on it. Ooh. So here is the water. Here is the orange. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Hold on. Ooh, blushy. Um. So, what do you think is going to happen? I think it's going to float. You do? Yeah. Why do you think that? I don't know. No, no. It's going to float. And you think it's going to see friendly? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's test out. Our theories here. All right, ready, set, go. Oh, that's good. So, what do we know about its um, buoyancy? Can I get it? Hold on. Oh. What do we know about its? Uh, um, what's going on? The orange peel is full of hollow packets of air, which make the orange peel less dense than the <clears throat> water. So that's why it's floating. All right, go ahead and take out the orange and peel it. It was only staying up on this side. All right, now what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to sink or is it going to float? I feel like this is a trick question. <laughs> sink. So I think it's going to sink. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Go. Well, oh. I thought it was a trick okay. question. Okay. It's both. It's both. Well, it was supposed to sink. <laughs> I think I know why. The, so I think it's because the middle part's still in it. The air pockets in the peel allow the orange to float. It's like the orange is wearing a peel as a life jacket. Without the life jacket, it nope. sinks. So it go, but it does go further down in the water than it did before, right? Um, yeah, but it's both. <sighs> Can I eat okay. 
Actually, no, it's really wet and gross. Maybe we need to try it. Let me try it with the bigger orange. Hold on. Can I pop? You gotta put it in? Oh. Okay, so that was close. close. Do you want to peel it, Brenda, or do you want me to? I'm gonna let this orange dry a little bit. I don't have any in it. Okay, sink or float? It's supposed to sink. <laughs> sink. Okay. Sink. I've never, I've done this experiment so many times and never had it. <laughs> I have a lot of questions there. Alright, so now what we're gonna do is get some aluminum foil. <laughs> and you're going to you're going to fashion a boat out of the aluminum foil. When your boat is ready, go ahead and set it in here. I want you guys to make, <clears throat> okay, make a guess or a hypothesis about how many pennies you think is gonna fit. How many gonna fit? Yeah. Until it sinks. Until it sinks. Pennies are very light for pennies. Well, ten at least. Ten at least. Okay, go ahead. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. Oh, forty. Well, it sank at forty-one. So how many did it stay at? Forty. All right, Brian, you're up. Oh, my pennies are wet. Okay, they'll dry. Hey, they have to pour them in. Now this is super heavy. Got water in it, sure. All right, Brent, start with some dry pennies. Wait, hypothesis, how many do you think is gonna hold? It's at 30. 30? Got two. Four, like 40. 40, you think? The same? Three, four, five, six. So if you guys want to make adjustments to your boats and try it one more time, that's fine. Or you can get a new piece of foil. Ready me up? I oh almost done. Me too. I made a little pouch. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have the same idea. Okay. So, do you think it's gonna hold more or less than it held before? Um. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and start counting. I'll be right back. I'm gonna start counting. Three, four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Oh, I fell at ten. I was right. It was much less. Oh. Yeah, my other boat is better. I expanded mine a little. I gotta do my other boat again. Hey, cheater. What? what? You're making mine into a rectangle. Yeah. I'm gonna throw in a bunch of pennies and when it sinks, I'm gonna count them. Whoops. I feel like this one, a shoe boat, would be better. Just, just throwing them in. And I'm going to count them on the things. Oh, man, it went down. <laughs> Can I count how many this was? Okay. Can I count this one? Oh, boy. So, so the flatter hull held more pennies, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I made this one slightly rounded. It says, um... Let me get mine. 
a flatter hole holds more pennies than a boat that de sits deeper in the water. Cinnamon, hush. So while I was editing, I kind of forgot that I left out like the language arts piece of this. I talked about how we compare and contrast the stories and we do that during the discussion. And sometimes I'll even have my oldest type out a uh, response to a prompt. Um, but we also, uh, while I'm reading, we make these uh, little puppets. So we've done, these are like abstract art puppets. This is from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Um, I found puppets online where we, this is Hansel and Gretel, um, and they color and cut them out. She did the regular house on the back and the gingerbread house on the front. Um, and I found other, like these are finger puppets. Um, and so basically we tried to either find or create some puppets and they use those when they retell the story. So they can either narrate it back or they can um, make up their own version of whatever fairy tale that we are studying. But basically we're just trying to get them used to retelling a story or creating a story or using that creative mind um, for storytelling as we're working towards later being able to write these compare and contrasts. So I didn't want to leave that out when I was doing this video so I went ahead and popped on and recorded that for you guys so back to the original. I hope you guys found that informative. I hope I was able to help you guys um, come up with some ideas that have been working really well for our home school. Um, like I said before, if you have questions, please comment down below or something you'd like to see in more uh, detail. I'd be happy to share that with you. And then while you're down there, I hope you will subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. And I think that is all I have for you guys today. So I will talk to you again soon. Bye. I went orange. <laughs>